the weakness that those companies have is on the incorporation side. We did a lot of experiments here and a lot of experiments here, but we were still like a GmbH. So the standard limited company. On a sudden level, you're like, okay, should I really put myself fully in there if tomorrow I can receive a letter and I'm fired? Right. So it's, it's, it feels vulnerable. Yeah. the one who created the um, the fair shares commons uh, mm -hmm. incorporation model and like the what he's saying is um, that you need to if you want to build an organization that is like different you need mm -hmm. to work on these three axes so the first one is um, how do decisions get made like level zero is just top down, okay, somebody's the boss making the decisions and the other people are like executing on that. And the more you are leaning towards level five, the more I would say like independence and and possibility for everybody to 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 co-create and to to be f like fully involved into the company. And level five on this level on this uh, scale it's called autopoetic and it means like s the organization is self-creating so it's really like an ecosystem that out of itself can can um, develop or, or can can adjust its own purpose it's really it's its own entity that has the authority to say like okay our lifetime is over and this entity needs to die right now and it's not like the property of somebody else who tries to get anything out of it mm -hmm. but it's really its own mm -hmm. its own living being so understand, to say understand. and um, in order to complement that you need to have the people who are capable of working in in such an in such an organization because of course yeah. it's that requires a lot of maturity and a lot of ownership compared to just doing what somebody else tells you Right. And this is the this is the human axis, um, and like of course level zero it's okay you are good at designing and uh, you are replaceable and if you if you don't do your job well we get another designer like and um, the more you lean towards level five level five is really like the purpose of why you are a part of this organization is because you want to grow. Like mm. development is not something like okay we 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 send you as an employee to a certain kind of seminar so that you become better at your job so you can earn more money but it's really like the purpose of of the of of you growing is because this organization mm -hmm. wants to support mm -hmm. you growing mm -hmm. um and this needs to be like inherent in the people that are that are coming okay mm -hmm. i'm i'm here to to grow into my maximum potential and that means mm -hmm. like facing things that are difficult and at the same time like it can be a beautiful process but really i'm i'm committed mm -hmm. to to my personal ex expansion because i know that this is the best for me and i can be of the of the of the highest service mm -hmm. for the organization as a whole the the weakness like most really like innovative organizations that are leaning towards level five on these two dimensions on how do decisions get made and how do we treat the people um, the weakness that those companies have is on the incorporation side. Like mm -hmm. most of them, this is what, 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 what we did in the past, like we did a lot of experiments here and a lot of experiments here, but we were still like a GmbH. So the standard yeah. limited company that is property of somebody and yeah. yeah. So <laughs> on, a, on, a, like, on a sudden level, you're like, okay, should I really put myself fully in there if tomorrow I can receive a letter and I'm fired? Right. So it's, it's, it feels vulnerable. Yeah. And um, that's why it's important to lean more towards um, level five here as well. And um, mm. what, he, what he defines as level five on the incorporation level 
uh, is the fair shares commons that means an entity that is not the property of anybody mm -hmm. but that is stewarded by all the stakeholders together mm -hmm. by uh, by employees by investors by customers by the local ecosystem mm -hmm. like the local village where it's located whatever like yeah. all of the stakeholders are interested in like collectively stewarding the the organization yeah and to have this not as something we're doing or we're aspiring to, to but it, that's really like in the legal documents anchored nobody can sell this nobody can do this and nobody mm -hmm. can exploit the company for personal gain mm -hmm. um yeah and he says that if you are like consistent if you are on like even if you're on level zero level zero level zero this is something that really works nicely like most of the <laughs> most of the companies in the world they're like standard limited companies they just take yeah. advantage of their employees and and yeah. it, it, it's 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 working for earning a lot of money like yeah, yeah. but if you if you build like a table that is one one leg is like uh, level four and the other one is level one it's like it's not working it, the mm. table cannot cannot stand properly it's really like vulnerable right and that's why it's important to to work on all the three axes like yeah. simultaneously yeah. and to ideally lean towards level five on all the all, all dimensions because that only then it's a really yeah. it's a really stable thing right because you have the people who are mature enough to do that they are putting everything they are and they have and mm -hmm. on the legal fund on the legal level you have the foundation for that Right. All right, I had a really, really, really good meeting with David. Every Monday morning, we're sitting together, planning the week, and as it is uh, the beginning of November, planning the month as well, and tackling questions that are on the table right now. And one of the big ones is the legal setup. Like, what is the ideal entity um, for Custodia? And that's something that we don't have full clarity on. Next step is to a conversation with with the lawyer and um, think through different scenarios. But what is very clear for us is that Custodia cannot be an entity that is owned by anybody. It needs to be its own thing, its own living being that is stewarded by many different stakeholders, that is stewarded by people who are living here, that is stewarded by uh, people who are contributing to the to the to the space that is stewarded by like the local village that is surrounding it that is stewarded by by possible employees like everybody together who is interested in the in the well-being and the thriving of this place needs to have a stay stake at governance um yeah that's what we are trying to figure out how we can implement that in the Asian, indonesian um yeah, legal setting. Not an easy task and not a super exciting one, but um, an important one. Papa, that's Hm? An die Steckdose, genau. Ja. Ist an die Steckdose angeschlossen, der Ventilator, ne? Das ist schön. Ja. Ja, oder? Ne? Konflikt. Ja. Nicht Schock. Der? Ja. Der hat einen Schock erlitten, ne? Deswegen ist der geschockt. Aber hier, guck mal, der nicht. Der hat keinen Konflikt erlitten. Weil der wurde zwar entlassen, aber sein Lebensunterhalt ist durch seine Familie gesichert. Deswegen ist es nicht schlimm für ihn. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Recently I got asked what kind of children's books I have uh, for Leo. And the answer is none. <laughs> and what we do, and we, what we just did, is Leo just is interested in the books that I'm reading, and we just explored the different layers of the skin and how the how our hairs are growing out of the skin. And then Leo like pointed to his arm and said like, "Ha, ha." And I think that. Yeah, this separation between these are the adult things and these are the children things, this, this is not helpful. Yeah.
it's my it's my um task as an adult to let Leo participate in the things that that are of interest to me. <laughs> and he's very interested in that. Especially in the <laughs> his favorite part are the <laughs> the different the different people uh, who are suffering a conflict shock. Um, different forms of conflict shocks and then they are reacting. <laughs> and Leo always does like and then we explore what kind of conflict shock uh, did this person have. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow, Fred! I was just standing on the toilet. I, I was just sitting on the toilet. And then... I felt the urge to stand up. And I made my <laughs> first steps after 15, da 15 days of not walking. For the past 15 days I was laying in bed and um, when I was moving to the toilet or to the terrace or to get something from the other side of the room, I was like walking like a crap. But somehow I felt the urge to stand up and I can tell you it was such a beautiful experience. Oh my god, the perspective. Like for the for the past 15 days my life took place on the on Lionel's eye level. Like I was on the same level as a two year old. And now when I was standing up and seeing the room from above, it felt like, wow. <sighs> what a beautiful experience. Oh my God. And no, this will not be the new normality from now on. I sense that it's still difficult and it feels shaky and I can only like, yeah, I cannot use my full foot. And I will not um, stress the foot too early too much. Um, but I sense that slowly but gradually we're leaving the bed behind. <sighs> what a relief. What a relief. Of course, yeah. It was a good process. The past two weeks it was a good process and I used the space that opened up for myself I used that well I had a lot of empathy with my body and it was a good process and at the same time over the past days more and more I got this sense of oh, I want to go out there again I want to be at the land I want to be active I want to be with Leo I want to just like participate in life fully slowly we're getting there <laughs> Crazy, crazy. We just had our bi-weekly uh, <sighs> crazy friends. We just had our twice weekly um, quest update sharing with our custodians from Poland. And one of my quests is of course exploring how my body works by immersing myself into the five biological laws. By now you probably have realized that this is one of my t favorite topics right now. <laughs> in all of the last videos I'm only talking about the five biological laws and it's insane like the more I immerse myself into how this intricate system really works the more like everywhere I look around me like there are symptoms everywhere it's crazy I had a phone call with my brother just like casually and he shares various symptoms that he currently has then i reconnect with a uh, with a friend um with whom i didn't um um uh, wh with whom i didn't talk uh, uh uh over the past months and she shared with me that she got a quite severe diagnose then um i'm casually on youtube and i'm watching a home tour of uh, john batiste uh, like i'm a huge fan like this is an incredible artist um, with his wife and she got diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia like there are symptoms everywhere and I'm like 
and then she got like it's crazy she get like intense cancer treatment and her hair fell out and like yeah and then I remember like two years ago my my other grandma passed away um, she was diagnosed with cancer and she got treated by the conventional medical apparatus with all sorts of yeah stuff that you usually do when you get a cancer diagnosis and of course she passed away shortly after like the more I'm immersing myself into this topic the more I realize how much of a superpower it is to really understand how our bodies work yeah and at the same time the deeper I dive the more I realize it's it's complex it's really 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 complex <laughs> yeah this only strength of my commitment to dive in